Hi everyone, Miss Graham, thanks for joining me again. Um, I hope you've been building during the school closure. I hope you've been looking around your house and tinkering with stuff. That's one of my most favorite things to do. Um, and I, this is a story about a girl who likes to tinker with things, but it sort of speaks to that side of tinkering when things don't always go right. When we build things, when engineers build things in the world, it doesn't always go right the first time. In fact, it doesn't always go right the first 100 times. And that can be really frustrating. So that's what this book is about. And I love that because we all go through that when we build things. Um, the Most Magnificent Thing by Ashley Spires. And this is published by Kids Can Press. The Most Magnificent Thing. To all the little perfectionists in the world. This is a regular girl and her best friend in the whole wide world. They do all kinds of things together. They race, they eat, they explore, they relax. She makes things. He unmakes things. One day, the girl had a wonderful idea. She is going to make the most magnificent thing. Do you know what magnificent means? She knows just how it will look. Magnificent means uh, really, really, really amazingly great. She knows just how it will work. All she has to do is make it. And she makes things all the time. Easy peasy. First, she hires an assistant. She's like me. Her best friend and assistant is a dog. Sometimes mine is a cat, too. Next, they gather their supplies. They set up somewhere out of the way and get to work. Is she really out of the way? The girl tinkers and hammers and measures. While her assistant pounces and growls and chews. When she is finished, she steps back to admire her work. She walks around one side. Her assistant examines the other side. Doesn't look right. Her assistant picks it up and gives it a shake. It doesn't feel right either. They are shocked to see, to discover that the thing isn't magnificent or good. It isn't even kind of sort of okay. It's all wrong. The girl tosses it aside and gives it another go. She smooths and wrenches and fiddles. Her assistant circles and tugs and wags. When she is finished, she stands up and takes a long look at it. Her assistant gives it a nudge with his paw. The thing is still wrong. She decides to try again. The girl saws and glues and adjusts. She stands and examines and stares. She twists and tweaks and fastens. She fixes and straightens and studies. She's working, working really hard on this project. She tries all different ways to make it better. She makes it square. She makes it round. She gives it legs. She adds antenna. Antennae, pardon me. She makes it fuzzy. She makes it long, short, rough, smooth, big, small. She even makes one that smells of stinky cheese but none of them are magnificent. Her hard work attracts a few admirers, but they don't understand. They can't see the magnificent thing that she has in her mind. She gets mad. The angrier she gets, the faster she works. She smashes pieces into shapes. She jams parts together. She pummels the little bits in. Her hands feel too big to work, and her brain is too full of all the not right things. If only the thing would just work. Okay. Who has felt that way in their life? We all do feel that way, especially when we're trying to build something and we're challenging ourselves. Crunch. What is she, what happens? The pain starts in her finger. 
it rushes up to her brain and she explodes. It's not her finest moment. Have you ever gotten hurt while building something also? I am no good at this. I quit. Her assistant suggests a walk. It's not much help at first. But before long, she starts to feel different. Bit by bit, the mad gets pushed out of her head. As they stroll along, she comes across the first wrong thing she made. The bad feelings are about to start all over again. Then she notices something surprising. There are some parts of the wrong thing that are really quite right. The bolts on one, the shape of another, the wheel to seat ratio of the next. There are all sorts of parts that she likes. By the time she reaches the end of the trail, she finally knows how to make the thing magnificent. She gets to work. She works carefully and slowly, tinkering, hammering, twisting, fiddling, gluing, painting. Her assistant makes sure there are no distractions. Hmm. Is that really true? This is the perfect thing to ward off bears. This will stop that leak. This one's all wet. The afternoon fades into evening. Finally, she finishes. She alerts her assistant. I wonder what they made. The pair take a good long look. It leans a little to the left and it's a bit heavier than expected. The color could use a bit of work too, but it's just what she wanted. They climb aboard and take it for a spin. They are not disappointed. It really is the most magnificent thing. Now, one thing I really like about the character in this book is that she doesn't give up. She takes a little break. She gets really frustrated and gets really mad and she even hurts herself and that happens a lot especially when you're trying to challenge yourself and build things. But she takes a little break, she goes on a walk, and she comes back, and she ends up building something really cool for herself and her assistant. Um, thanks for listening to my story today. I hope you're well, and I miss you all really much.